All right. So, hello, and welcome to the People's Podcast. I am your host, Professor Jazz, the People's Champ, and I'm honored to introduce my guest today, our first guest ever here on People's Podcast. Her name is Christina Reno. She is the Vice President at the Southern New Jersey Chamber of Commerce. Christina runs the Teacher Institute for three weeks every summer. I was lucky enough to be invited to attend the Institute in 2018. And when I tell you Christina ran the program, I mean she was the coach, the quarterback, the referee, timekeeper, the whole program. She made sure we ate, we were always where we needed to be, and led a fantastic team that kept all of us cranky teachers feeling just fine. So in her role as a former government official and now a nonprofit, um, she works closely with the business community and has taken the responsibility of connecting educators with these captains of industry, technology, and information to help us all understand each other a little better and use that understanding to impact the future leaders of tomorrow. So welcome to the podcast, Christina, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, so here at People's Podcasts, we do a 10-question interview format and a bonus request at the end. So are you ready? I, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> All right, awesome. So uh, first question, how many workplace tasks still require the use of pen and paper? Pen and paper, I mean... I still think a lot do. I mean, it's definitely down from how it used to be, seeing everything is done on computer and electronics, mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, your fundamental reading, writing, and arithmetic still comes into play no matter what industry you're in and no matter what you do. So, um, so often, even though we are in much more technological world, you go to a meeting, you can't bring your laptop, you better be able to take detailed notes. You better be mm -hmm. able to then, th that you might be then transcribing onto your laptop later mm -hmm. or into your notes section on your phone later or whatever it may yeah. be. But at the end of the day, you, you better be able to be a good listener and be able to take, you know, if you are in a meeting setting or um, any kind of lecturing session, be able to take detailed notes that you're then going to be able to work off of later. Uh, similarly, you know, in a, in a workplace, at the end of the day, um, in what I do for a Chamber of Commerce, we're constantly um, putting on events for our members. And our members are businesses in the South Jersey region. Every single one of those um, events that we put on requires writing a script for the event. So that's everything from, hi, my name is Christina Renna, to this is the title of the event, these are the sponsors of the event, these are the names of the sponsors, these are these people's titles, um, and um, everything from the questions you're going to ask and the format. I mean, so you're writing a 10 to 12 page written script that you're reading at an event to make sure it stays organized. So yeah. they're just some uh, examples of how people are still every day writing yeah. and reading and using the fundamentals. Now, it obviously has changed, and life is much easier with the electronics, but you Definitely. need to be able to, to have, you know, these basic skills in order to be successful still to this day. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, in my work as an elementary teacher, the basic skills is what we're focusing mm -hmm. on. So yep. it sounds like a lot of that is uh, communication. Yep. So this next question is kind of similar to that one how many more tasks require reading and writing using technology mm -hmm. so we kind of talked about that yeah um so this is a personal like your history mm -hmm. of your education kind of question mm -hmm. what was the most important thing you learned in english class oh in english was definitely fine-tuning my writing skills um awesome. i i consider my i mean uh, maybe I'm tuning my own horn. I consider myself a pretty good writer. Um, and I was never math and science geared. I'm very English, Same literature, here. and history geared. Okay. Um, and even as a child, I, I have stories of me writing, you know, when I was a, a, a little girl to um, all of the papers I had to write. I was a political science major in my for my undergraduate oh, studies. Cool. 
So I had to do a lot of writing as it relates to Supreme Court cases and um, fine-tuning debate skills, but you know, that mm. all comes down to how I would write out my position and think it through beforehand. So I think that for me personally, um, the fine-tuning of you know, writing you know, thesis papers, writing larger papers, and getting that feedback from teachers that could be pretty harsh at times mm -hmm. has made me to continue to be a good writer today, where in my current job at, a chamber, at the chamber, um, not only do we deal with businesses, we also lobby at the state level for um, issues that impact the business community. So I'm writing position papers to the New Jersey Senate. Um, once, twice a week. So my writing skills have better be excellent if I'm submitting written testimony to the Senate and the Assembly here in New Jersey. Yeah, so. Totally. Um, debate skills, that was something that I think we should really be maybe stressing more in schools because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you probably, you have kids, mm -hmm. so... You know, kids love to debate. Yes. They love to ask questions, mm -hmm. have arguments. So, yeah, that's excellent. Um, so, yeah, like I said uh, before the intro, kind of when we were just talking, we went to this dinner a few weeks ago, and someone, well, a few people spoke about soft skills, mm -hmm. and that was kind of where I started to turn, like a turning point in my thinking on this project because I was trying to think reading and writing skills like what kind of reading and writing tests should we be teaching but after thinking about soft skills it kind of made me shift to maybe that's what we maybe that was the the whole answer so how invo how invaluable are soft skills to you in the workplace I mean at the end of the day I think a hybrid of you know the actual technical skills you may need for a job whether it's whether it's reading writing really well or whether it's you know you're an engineer or you're a chemist that you've got to operate at a high level there they're your hard skills mm -hmm. but you must be able to have soft skills in today's environment um, you have to be able to know how to speak to someone professionally look someone in the eye when you talk to them have a firm handshake, how you present yourself, having a good attitude. All of that is just as important, if not more important in some, in some industries than a hard skill that at the end of the day, a company can teach. Mm -hmm. So if I have two candidates and one comes in, let's say for an engineering job, and they are just coming out of college and they have an engineering degree, but they don't seem to have good soft skills, good communication skills. Um, they just seem kind of, you know, flat maybe. And then someone else comes in that may not have, maybe did engineering as a minor and maybe did something else totally as their major, but they come in, they're personable, they're eager to learn they ask good questions, they've done research on the company in which they want to work out before. Mm. All of that, I guarantee you that candidate is going to get the job over the, the one that might be the straight A engineering student mm -hmm. because they can teach more of those engineering skills and mold that person to what they want for that company. But they know they're dealing with someone with a positive attitude, someone that um, you know, kn knows the basics of um, how to interact with other people in the workplace. So mm -hmm. there, I think the soft skills that you heard a little bit about, mm -hmm. and um, and I this day and age, like I said, you you can't neglect the hard skills. Of course, they're there, they're important, yeah. but soft skills are just as, if not more, important these days. Yeah, I mean, it's it seems like it's all about people. It is. You know, networking. Relationships. Relationships. Yep. Yeah, no matter what business you're in. Yep, that is very true. Awesome. Um, so this question is specifically for any students listening. I put that in parentheses. Can you talk about how important... Oh, yeah. Can you p talk and tell us about how important it is to have a professional-looking resume? It is important. Um for sure. Now, uh, trends are evolving over time. So back, 
in a, I'm 38 years old. So when I first entered the workforce when I was 22, 23 years old, it was different then than it is today. Mm. So then it was still, you needed your resume and you needed your references and you had to have a very nice cover letter. Yes. And it was very, very standardized. Um, today, there is definitely more room for some creativity in your resume. Not too much. You don't want to get too crazy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, you know, there is uh, definitely um, getting back to those soft skills and showing your personality. Mm -hmm. Showing a little bit of your personality in your resume is not a bad thing. Now, I'm not saying if you love Fortnite, you know, somehow incorporating that into your resume. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, if you like whatever you like, you know, Pokemon, you put a Pokemon up in your corner of your resume because mm -hmm. you really love Pokemon. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> the, but yeah. there are ways that you can kind of express some of your interests and in in personality through your resume that may not have been as acceptable even 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, mm -hmm. and definitely not 20 years ago, you know, like it is today. And that model of a cover letter, you know, you talk to most HR professionals now and they'll tell you that a cover letter isn't necessary, but mm -hmm. your thank you letter always is. Uh. So the thank you letter is absolutely critical. Um, it can be an email, but it's even a nice touch if, if an applicant writes a handwritten thank you note. Yeah. Um, that really goes a long way. And that's sort of, it's funny because we're talking about how resumes have evolved into kind of a more modern format a little bit. I mean, I think the template is still basically the same, but there's a little bit of room, like I said, for creativity of the applicant there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a good old-fashioned handwritten thank you note still goes a really long way. So that goes um, really far, whereas the cover letters are really not as valuable as they used to be. Okay, that was going to be my next question, was <laughs> what kind of things do you look for in a cover letter? So there was a lot in there that you just said so like going back to the since this is for any kids that may be listening going back to the fortnite and pokemon examples so maybe say uh if you worked on a like a summer camp because my son is into coding and mm -hmm. video games and all that so say you did an internship at fortnite or you did a project where you made your own pokemon you know, go accessory to the app or something. That would be something. That would be a perfect example of something that maybe years ago, well, I mean, those things weren't even around obviously yeah. years ago, <laughs> but that would really stand out. Mm. And that would really show a little bit of your personality, a little bit of your interest, and also that you're talented enough to do that kind of stuff. So yeah. it goes a really long way. So, yeah. Um, and uh, as far as the thank you letter, that's something that. I've heard before that, uh, you know, if you go on an interview, no matter if you get the job or not, like following up with that person always. makes an impression. Not even, so you should always immediately, and speaking of our kids, my, my stepson, he um, had his first uh, full-time internship this summer, yeah. and he, when he was interviewing for different internships, he interviewed, um, he was at college, so it was a Skype interview. Okay. Um, and then I talked to him the next day or two days later and I said, did you send a thank you note? Mm -hmm. It was the next day. I said, did you send a thank you note? And so my stepson is, is at the time 20 years old. Okay. And uh, he said to me, well, no, I thought you were supposed to wait a few days. And I said, Christopher, this is not a date. Like you're not <laughs> trying to date this person. As soon as you are out of that interview, mm. you get back in front of that computer and you email a thank you note. Like I said, a handwritten note's a very special touch, but mm -hmm. especially this day and age, if kids are in college or whatever it may be, they might not have access to that. Yeah. Thank you note via email is all you need to do. I'm like, you do no, it's not like you don't wait two days. Yeah. You know, that's not what you do. You do it <laughs> immediately so A you don't forget and B it shows and in that thank you note, you should put in, pull out pieces of the interview that really stood out to you. So they know that you were really paying attention in that mm. interview. Um, they really know that, you know, this company, gra I gravitate towards this company because, you know, you said this and it really, you know, was impactful for me. Or you said this and it really, it really clicked with me that this is a company that shares my values or whatever it is. Take pieces of that and put it in that thank you note. Really personalize it. and. That's, I mean, that's absolutely a no-brainer. Okay, cool. Um, 
that actually, I want to stay on this thank you letter theme real quick because I, uh, I've always kind of been advised to, if you don't hear back after an interview, that's like when you want to wait, like you don't want to, like if you don't hear back in a day or two, you don't want to, yeah, like, oh, how did it go? Put too you much know, pressure you, on. Yeah. yeah. So you want to send the thank you note as soon as possible. Yes. But then as far if you don't hear back maybe follow up let in it a breathe. week yeah yeah week let it or breathe two, let it breathe i mean because these people are busy right i mean mm -hmm. and it's hard to kind of get out of your own head in this circumstance like you really want this job or you really want this internship or whatever yeah. it is and so that is all you're thinking about <sighs> all the time the person you just interviewed with is a professional that works at that company that is interviewing not just 20 other people for this job but interviewing 30 other people for 10 other jobs so mm -hmm. they're juggling a lot themselves mm -hmm. you are not the bane of their existence so mm -hmm. you need to balance being inquisitive and showing your interest on the job mm -hmm. with being overly aggressive yeah. because if you're overly aggressive it could it could annoy the person that you're dealing with from the HR department yeah. you know I think a good rule of thumb like I said as you get back from that interview that thank you note should be sent as quickly as possible definitely definitely within the 24 hour period but I say as quickly as possible so then you don't forget and put it mm -hmm. off and then you know I would give it a week and a half or so if mm. you don't hear anything by the end of that second week that's when you send a note you know you know the interview was two weeks ago you know I'm really excited I, I really thought a lot about you know the job since I'm really excited about just checking in to see if you made any decisions or if not if you can give me a timeline as to when a decision will be made so then you have in your mind what a reasonable time frame is so if you don't hear anything for another week and you don't freak out you know mm -hmm. if you know the decision may not be made for another month you know what I mean and mm -hmm. so I, I would always ask that question but you're right you don't want to annoy the people you don't want to seem too aggressive it's a it's a balancing act there yeah so like so just for clarification there's uh, two different kinds of post interview contact first the thank you letter and then a week and a half or so later a follow up mm -hmm. if necessary if you don't hear anything right cool um and one other thing while we're on the interview topic um you said something about a, like a desirable candidate asking quite like at the end of most interviews the interviewer will say do you have any questions for yes. me so when somebody does have questions and it shows that they've you know looked into the opportunity what kind of, you know, impression does that make on you? I mean, it, it, it goes far to know that the candidate cares enough to do their own research before walking in. Mm -hmm. That shows that it's not just a paycheck for this person. It's not just a person that wants a job anywhere. It's, wow, this person really has learned a little bit about the company. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I know someone that uh, in, well, applied for an internship at five below now five below everyone knows the store but their corporate headquarters is right here in philadelphia mm. so they wanted an internship there before they did that interview for an internship and this is another college student that i know um she went online researched the company put in five below looked up like google news where like the top like 10 new latest news stories well oh there's all this news about how in an Amazon era, Five Below is one of the few retailers that are growing, they're booming, they're popping up everywhere. And mm -hmm. that's hard to find in this Amazon era where everyone's ordering things online. Yeah. So she went into that interview and I said to her, she came to me for advice beforehand, I said, mm -hmm. that is the perfect thing when they say, you know, do you have any questions? You know, just ask about that because that's really impressive that Five Below continues to grow in this era where we're all ordering everything online. Yeah. And that should be your question. You know, I, I was doing some research on the company and I saw that you're adding however many stores. I think it was like 120 stores in the United States in 2019 where most companies aren't. You know, that's really interesting to me. Can you talk to me a little bit about how Five Below is able to do that in this, you know, new era um, where everyone buys everything online? 
boom, like she killed it with that. And and the, nice. the person she was interviewing with actually responded and said, I can really tell you did your homework. She yeah. said, she was like, so thank you. That was, a, you know, because we were kind of working together to help uh-huh. her get prepared. So it, it proves that you have a vested interest in the job you're applying for. Not just that, like I said, you want a paycheck, you know, mm-hmm. that you really want to work there because you, you've learned a little bit about the company and the culture. And that, again, just goes really far. Cool. Um, so this next one, I know that in my experience, uh, there's a lot of resume writing workshops and stuff like that. But as far as my teaching job that I have now, the opportunity that I had with you at the Summer Institute, uh, a lot of things come through email. So can we, well, I'd like to hear your thoughts on, uh, just acceptable email correspondence etiquette. Okay. I mean, uh, as much as, you know, we started off with the importance of being able to put pen to paper and write still, I mean, it is true that email dominates the workforce. And that is actually something I do struggle with every year with the Summer Institute, because I find that the teachers, the educators that go through the program are very different than than people that work in the business world where we are literally on our email 24 (laughs) 7 we are constantly constantly emailing i'm not saying it's healthy i'm Mm -hmm. not saying it's good but i have been on the road all day at a variety of different meetings um Mm -hmm. all day and here we'll do an experiment right now (laughs) um i have not had a chance to look at my inbox at all since nine I'm um, 9 15 9 30 this morning wow. and I have 109 unread emails oh wow since like a little after nine this morning wow so I need to get to them yeah before the day is over okay. so that's just an example and, and it's the summer so mm. if that was October that would probably be like 200 225 because wow. you know half you know, people are on vacations, people yeah. aren't working as much yeah. in the summer. So that gives you an example. As far as etiquette goes, I mean, it depends who you're emailing with, right? If mm-hmm. I'm emailing with people internally in my office that I work with every day, it's obviously much more informal, you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah. it doesn't have to be very formal. Yeah. But if I'm emailing a member company, because obviously businesses are my members, mm-hmm. it's always very professional. Dear, usually it's a first name. If I don't know the person, it might be a Mr. or a Mrs., but mm-hmm. comma. And it's, it's just like you would write a letter yeah. and it's very formal and you sign it, you know, regards, best regards, sincerely, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is more, much more formalized when you're, you know, when you're making a formal request, but again, it can always be much more informal. Um, yeah. but still at the end of the day, we're not, you know, uh, typing like we text. So when I say yeah. informal, yeah. I don't mean typing like we text, like, you know, a lot like of the kids. LOLs yes. BRBs. Correct. <laughs> We're not doing that. That's not what I mean by informal. It just yeah. doesn't have to be quite as, I don't know, articulate and um, planned out. It could just be quick responses here and there. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know, uh, like you, similar to you, uh, English was like my subject in school. All my teachers always said I was great at it. So whenever I send an email, it's like I put a lot of, you know, time and consideration into how it reads. And, of course. And I feel like it's worked well for me. Yeah. It, up it, to this point. I mean, cause if, if you're emailing someone that you don't know, that's their first yeah. impression of you. So that's exactly. something that's really important to keep in mind. And like I said, if you're emailing someone different, you're emailing <laughs> your mom and dad, you're emailing, you know, someone that you see every day or work with every day, obviously it doesn't have to be as formal. Yeah, so just like in verbal language, right. it's just like the same kind of. But I can't emphasize how much people are on email in the business world. It's, yeah. It is around the clock. So. Okay, good to know. A <laughs> um, few more questions. So this one may be kind of leading. It's a good thing I didn't go to law school. But um, is teaching students, in your opinion, to pass tests, preparing them for life after school, or should we be focusing more on teaching skills? No, you need to focus on teaching skills. And you Agreed. Need to, and you need to focus on teaching um, trades and, and trades, subjects yeah. that are outside the box, not your, not your standardized tests. 
You know, I never knew what I wanted to do for a living until I took an elective called um, PLE, political and legal education. Mm. My background is in politics. I work in business and politics right now in my current role. Um, but up until this role, I worked in politics. Mm -hmm. And I would have, up until that, and I took that my sophomore year of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do for a living until I took that class and went to model Congress in high mm. school. And now that elective is gone in the high school. I, I went to public high school, that elective is gone. They don't offer it anymore. Mm -hmm. No different than a woodworking class or an auto repair class. They used to be so popular in the 70s oh, yeah. and 80s. You know, that's all gone now because everything is so standardized. Yeah. That's why so many kids have a hard time figuring out what they want to do because their teachers are being forced to teach to a test yeah. and they're not broadening their horizons of like different things. You know, you're not going to teach debate, getting back to debate. You're not yeah, going to yeah. teach... Um, you know, necessarily home ec. You're not going to necessarily teach sewing. All those programs are getting cut. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's a real shame because so many people, even, you know, my age, got there, figured out what they were going to do because of those kinds of elective classes. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the answer. I mean, my whole philosophy of probably why I became a teacher is I just felt like the things that schools were focusing on were not I mean there's so much more out there yes you know there's so many different ways that uh you can take your education if you have the option to do right. so and right. yeah I mean don't yeah I won't get started <laughs> on a uh, political and education philosophy. So that'll <laughs> save that for another day. Um, so this is kind of like a follow-up. Is there one thing that you didn't learn that you wish you had learned in anywhere K to 12 education? That's a good question. Um, huh. No, I mean, uh, I went to public school, but... Okay. Um, I, I just really wish I had focused more personally on certain things that I didn't. Like I said, I hated science and I hated math. And not that I need it in my day to day, mm -hmm. but, and even like history, I mean, I, I was good at, I, but I mean, I, I didn't love it. Like I loved English or literature writing. Um, so I wish I had just taken more time to focus Mm -hmm. on them or, or maybe even connect with those teachers more because mm -hmm. getting back to the whole relationships are everything relationships are everything the student teacher relationship goes such a long way too you have a teacher that inspires you to want to learn about a subject matter you might not be particularly interested in then you're gonna still care about that class and I really only cared about the classes I cared about yeah. and really wanted to learn about and that so that's a me issue that's mm -hmm. not a uh that's not education an education issue, issue. Gotcha. Um, but I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that I feel like was missing so I don't know okay. I think I failed I think I got an F on that question I'm sorry <laughs> no that's that's fine you're actually there was something in your uh, previous answer that you said that I'm trying to I'll probably email you some follow because when I listen back there's going to be some things that I'm like oh I, I should have okay. followed up all right, so uh, one last question, okay. and then uh, the bonus request. Okay. So, this one is, uh, so if we're teaching tech, because, you know, we, I definitely spend time working with uh, kids on laptops. Right now, I'm teaching second grade. Okay. So, I want to make sure that when I'm giving them technology options, it's uh, it's gonna be something that they can use moving forward mm -hmm. so that I'm not, you know, there's so many games and so many different sites. So this question is, uh, what kinds of technology or apps or programs are most valuable or in demand in the workplace? I mean, it depends on the industry. Every industry is different. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you want to be a doctor or a nurse, 
I'm sure that there are specialized apps for even, you know, elementary education for that. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in being an engineer, I mean, during the Summer Institute, you remember, we went to Lockheed Martin and we did that, think mm -hmm. like an engi engineer activity with yeah. the Legos. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's not a technology app, but that's still a fun thing. Probably mm -hmm. not appropriate for second graders, but still mm -hmm. appropriate for middle school kids that they can do. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So it really does depend on the industry, and I don't honestly know what's out there in the form of apps that students would need because it's just not something that I'm educated on. Mm -hmm. But I am absolutely positive that at the end of the day, you know, if you're interested in you know being a lawyer, you know, then there mm -hmm. are I'm sure there are things geared towards that, and you know we know that there are plenty of apps geared towards teaching kids from a very young age personal finance, mm -hmm. and that are just some fundamental basic skills that are going to help you across the board. In any job you take, so yeah, I like the uh, the Wells Fargo presentation. Uh, Hands-on banking, yeah, yeah. yeah that I was really. Some of that I mean, stuff. it's it's made for kids, and yeah. I feel like every time we do it, I'm still listening, and I'm like, I'm an, <laughs> I'm an adult, and I just learned something new, yeah. and also, can you just manage all my money for me? Because you, you would be great. <laughs> exactly, but, yes. exactly. Um, well, yeah, maybe apps was the wrong word. I guess what I'm getting at is. Uh, when I view like a job posting, it'll say like must be proficient in Word, Excel. Yes. Like I'm, like I taught Word. I had my kids like open up Word and try typing. Okay. Last year, I'm terrible with Excel. I'm, I'm <laughs> like not even a beginner. Okay. Like, I'm lower than like a novice, but uh, so. Like Word and Excel. Those kinds of programs, sure. Those kind so, of things. Yeah. so Word is obviously essential. Excel, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not an expert at Excel, mm -hmm. but I know I know the basics. I can I can use Excel, um, you know, not very, very high level, but I can certainly use it very proficiently okay. just from years of having to use it in the business space and I've worked in government and I've worked in politics and I've worked in the now nonprofit but with the business community and Excel has always been absolutely critical yeah um, similarly <coughs> PowerPoint is yes, is yes, a PowerPoint. big one um, and then you have basically the Google versions of, of all those. So mm -hmm. Google, Slides, uh, exactly, docs. exactly. That's, I, I notice a lot in the educator community that's being used. Yep. Um, so the Google equivalent of PowerPoint is really great to know how to use. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they have a word, but they definitely have an Excel, um, the Google document, and that can be shared by numerous people. Mm -hmm. I used to use that for a period of time as well in a previous job I had. So being proficient in those, I think, are great. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, especially if you are into um, databasing, like for if you're into math or accounting or even databasing if you're in sales, there's a program called Access that I don't actually know how to use. I've never had to use, but I know that um, Access is another program that's very critical, not just to accounting features, but databasing in general. Mm -hmm. um, that's a tool that a lot of different businesses across the spectrum of industries use. So they would be the ones that I would say. All right. Great. Well, we have made it. <laughs> to the final portion of our interview. Okay. I'm like, so, I'm nervous. I yeah, know I know. Perfect. I built it up all crazy. It's actually pretty uh, simple. It's just to recommend one book for that someone should read before they finish school or just in general. Oh, man, if, you can help me on the spot yeah. like that. There's so many. You should yeah, send me these questions in advance. I before they finish school, like... Like, like maybe, like a book that you read that was important to your worldview, or that, because yeah, this is kind of tough because there's so many people anything. that could be listening. It could be students listening to this, teachers. Why don't I do this? Why okay. don't we pause and then I will I will email you my high because there's gonna be there's gonna be different phases there's okay. gonna be books I'm a big reader so awesome so awesome. so there's gonna there's gonna be a book probably from when I was younger there's gonna be a book for my high school years there's probably gonna be a book for my college years and I'm gonna give a book for my professional career I'll give you four awesome but just don't make me do it right now I want to go home and look at my bookshelves most definitely <laughs> is that okay yes that all right. is all right um is there anything that we should say before we sign off or anything you want to 
No, I mean, I think this is great. Listen, at the end of the day, any tip you can get in entering the workforce, take it, listen to people that, that know what they're talking about, um, and keep your eyes open for all kinds of different career opportunities, and listen to your teachers because they know what they're talking about. So <laughs> yes, that, yes. Would, that, would be, that would be my last bit of advice. Wise words indeed. Well, I want to say thank you so much. You're very welcome. It was and, my uh, pleasure. Yes, we might have to have you back sometime. All right. I'm always up for it. All right. Great. Well, well, thank, thank you. Good? You think that was good? I think that I gotta was get awesome. back. You guys.